synthesis, and decomposition reactions. Chemical changes take place in chemical reactions. Reactions can be classified in different ways. One scheme lists five types of reactions, and that's what we're going to talk about here. Synthesis or combination, same thing. Decomposition, combustion, single replacement, and double replacement. A classification scheme used in advanced chemistry courses is acid base, oxidation reduction, or precipitation reactions. The reaction types are related. Synthesis, decomposition, and single replacement are special cases of oxidation reduction reactions. Acid base and precipitation reactions are types of double replacement reactions. Precipitation reactions will be covered in this unit. A more extensive treatment of oxidation reduction reactions will come later. We'll use this classification scheme with the five types of reactions. We'll start with the first two of these, synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. They are very closely related. Two or more substances combine to form a new compound in a synthesis reaction. Usually the product is a binary compound, a compound consisting of two elements. However, in cases like photosynthesis, there can be multiple elements combining to form multiple products, one of which is more complex than either reactant. In all cases of synthesis reactions, one of the products is a new compound containing the elements that reacted. In a decomposition reaction, a compound separates into two or more simpler substances. It's the reverse of a synthesis reaction. In fact, any synthesis reaction becomes a de decomposition reaction when it is run in the opposite direction. Energy is released when the reaction proceeds in one direction. The exact same amount of energy must be added in order to have the reaction run in the opposite direction. One example of a synthesis reaction is the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen. An example of a decomposition reaction is the breaking down of water into hydrogen and oxygen. This is the synthesis reaction run in the opposite direction. But there's a key difference. This synthesis reaction releases a lot of energy. We're combining hydrogen gas plus oxygen to form water. And a great example of this is shown in this YouTube video. For the decomposition reaction to proceed, the same energy that was released in the synthesis reaction to produce water must be put back into the water to break it down. This is often done in the form of electricity, and it is called the electrolysis of water. This is how hydrogen can be used as a fuel. First, electricity is used to decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is then stored in tanks for future use. The hydrogen is then used in a synthesis reaction to form water, releasing the energy that was used to initially decompose the water. The exhaust of a car using hydrogen fuel consists of just water vapor. The example of water involved molecules, but synthesis and decomposition reactions also occur with ions and ionic compounds. Here's the synthesis reaction for table salt or sodium chloride. Sodium plus chlorine yields sodium chloride. The complementary decomposition reaction is salt turning into sodium and chloride, chlorine. This is another case in which synthesis releases a large amount of energy, and you can check out this YouTube video to see it. For the decomposition reaction to proceed, the same energy that was released in the synthesis reaction must be put back into the salt to break it down. This is done by first melting the crystal, the salt crystals, and then using a voltage to separate the ions. By one well accepted definition, there can only be one product from a synthesis reaction. However, we'll use the definition that there can be more than one product as long as one of those products is more complex than either reactant. So two elements forming a binary compound is a synthesis reaction, and we'll also consider it to be a synthesis reaction when reactants, which are elements or binary compounds, right, elements or binary compounds, react to form a ternary compound, which is a compound comprised of three or more elements. This is the case with photosynthesis. Its reactants are binary compounds, carbon dioxide and water, and its products are glucose, C6H12O6 and oxygen. 
While it has two products, glucose is a ternary compound comprised of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Since a more complex product is created by the reaction, we consider this to be a synthesis reaction. In our examples of single product synthesis, energy was released by the reaction and needed to be returned in order to drive the decomposition reaction. That's almost always the case if there is just one product. Synthesis reactions, which produce a single product, release energy. Decomposition reactions, which break that product into its original species, requires that released energy be put back into the product. The opposite occurs with photosynthesis. Energy from light is needed to drive the synthesis reaction. The needed energy is provided by light, usually the sun, hence its name be the combination of photo and synthesis, meaning that it is a synthesis reaction made possible by light. Energy captured by this reaction is stored in glucose. Most life on Earth relies on the energy captured by the glucose molecule, either directly or indirectly. In order to use that energy, life has developed elaborate processes called respiration that have the net effect of driving the following decomposition reaction, releasing the energy captured from the sun. The capture of solar energy by the photosynthesis reaction and its release by the decomposition reaction during respiration is what you rely on to live. And this is covered in great detail in biology courses.